Hey, what's up guys? So today let's talk about how I set up my plate carriers and, and some considerations to think about and some of the little stuff that I do that's different from uh, some people, right? Because you always find a way of fixing things that are wrong or that some piece of gear works almost good enough, like 98, 98.9% .9 and you're like, I need 1.1 more and you can do it yourself. So let's talk about some of the little things and, uh, and hopefully this gives you some ideas. But just like uh, whenever I talk about play carriers, it's, you know, this is very specific to you. It's very specific to what you're doing, right? What is your, your job? What's your mission? What's, what, what is it that you're, you're getting into? Um, don't just copy other people. Go through the things that you need, right? Be like, okay, I need mags. Cool. I need a knife. Cool. And then just like start stacking things on as much as you need and then start slimming down and seeing what tools actually conquer more things than one. So uh, I like things to be multi-purpose if necessary, or if they're individually tasked in some form or fashion, like they can only do one thing, then that's cool too. But most of the time, mags are only one, one trick ponies. But that's why I do certain things with those too. Now, let's talk about like um, going through like my plate carrier setup. Now, as you can see, like this is the, the Ice Plates uh, Exo. It is what I usually use um, other than another plate carrier that I use from Defense Mechanisms. I like both really, really, uh, I like them both a lot to the point where I keep switching back and forth. Um, most of the time, if I'm outside and I'm doing some stuff in a wet environment, I usually use the X Exo just because it's hydrophobic. And if you want to know more about the Exo plate carrier, go to the Exo plate carrier video which I literally filmed before this one, but it came out at a different time. <laughs> so film it when you got the equipment out. Um, <laughs> so going through, um, let's talk about like the front, right? So front of my plate carrier, actually let's talk about the back, right? Back of my plate carrier, real simple. I don't really put much on it. Um, reason for that, right? If I'm gonna use a back panel, it's gotta be very specific to what I'm doing like carrying breaching stuff or breaching tools or I'm just the mule, whatever it is. Um, but I like carrying a bag. I like carrying a backpack. It's something that I carry over from my time in the military. Um, if I'm going to, if I'm going to do more stuff, I need to bring more stuff and why not have it in a bag that I can take off, toss to somebody, throw in a car, whatever I need to do. Um, and then in vehicles, having stuff on your back panel is really uncomfortable. It's really uncomfortable. So those big pouches or those permanent bags, things like that, you have to keep them very slim or you just can't wear them very much or just empty them out and wear a backpack over them, which a lot of guys end up doing sometimes. Now, I, I prefer just keeping it slick. That way I could just put on a bag. I, I use a simple bag, nothing crazy mollied up or, or heavy if I don't need to, but like a simple, simple LBT, like 14 liter is, is perfect. Perfect for my frame, uh, my size person. Uh, I'm about 5'10", 185 pounds on a good day. So um, I prefer to use that and I'll just snap the front in the front and just rock on like that. And it's, it's not the most comfy way of going about it because plate carriers with back panels are way more comfortable. Um, but I, every time I use one, I end up unzipping it or taking it off because I just don't need that much stuff on a back panel. Now, if it's just specific to a certain task and that plate carrier is just for that, I get it. That's super usable. Um, or just keep water in it. That's cool. But there's other options out there. Uh, I, I just prefer to use backpack. So that's my spiel on that one. Now, going to the right side of my plate carrier, right? We started on the back. We're going to the right or what would be my right side. I usually keep it pretty slick. Not to say I can't add things. So I like to keep it slick mainly because I usually go for a handgun down there, stuff like that. Um, but I also, uh, if I needed to, I could put a pouch over here for like SSE stuff, or I could use it for like smaller items like tools. Um, I used to keep like a, a Leatherman on there, but then I moved it to my belt a long time ago. Um, uh, because this plate carrier just supplements what's on my belt. My belt is what I need for doing the job, whatever it is. So, uh, wing style pouches like so, these can be really useful for adding mags, radios, uh, smoke grenades, just anything you need that would be uh, that you could add to this side. I like doing things like that. I like having the versatility to rip them off and just put them away and not use them or put them in my bag and then put them on if I need them, whatever it is. So uh, I usually keep this side pretty slick, but it is somewhere that you could put stuff. 
The other way that I usually keep this thing is with a side plate. So depending on the plate carrier, depending on what I'm doing, a side plate is definitely something I've used and I actually, I, I think they're very necessary. Um, I just don't keep them on all my plate carriers because it's not necessary. <laughs> no, but uh, sometimes I just don't need them. Um, now with a plate carrier, right? With, with one of these side plates, uh, just be aware that the further back you put them, the less they're protecting the front end of your body. The closer you put them to the front plate, you start to add more to your front, front plate's ability to protect you a little bit. So just be aware of that as you go through and, and start adding things to it. Um, side plates do add a considerable amount of weight and you may have to adjust your cummerbund if you do so. But it's definitely something I like to do and I usually put them on the inside so they don't add more bulk or any more bulk. So going further, um, let's get to the front. So on the front side, I go ahead and I go pretty slick with this. I can beef it up and like use a different type of placard and get a little bit more crazy with it. Um, but most of the time I'm very slick with the front portion of my, my carrier because I like to be able to lay down if I had to. So if I get into the prone, I, I don't want too much stuff digging into me or keeping me up. So being able to get low, uh, pretty important in certain situations. Uh, so try to kind of slim down your front if you need to if you don't have to or if you're stuck being the saw gunner Man, sometimes I've seen saw gunners. They just slick out the front and they just put all their their uh, nutsack pouches on the sides so it, it makes it a lot easier for them and then uh, I mean, I think as a, as a saw gunner once upon a time it was an easier way of going about it the other method is to make sure that you have a pouch or a front panel that you can unclip, push to the side, and now you can lay down a little flatter. So if you do have a lot of shit on your front, make sure it's something you can unclip and rotate out of your way. Um, I like being able to do that. That way I'm not, um, one, I'm not losing it because it's still retained to an extent on one clip or one G-hook, like in this case. But the other reason is that now um, I can I can go ahead and get lower to the ground and still have all my equipment for me and ready to go. So just be aware of that and make sure that you're kind of whipping it to the side that you know you don't need to reach down and get other things. So I usually whip it over to the left. Options. So going back further, right, the, the front panels that I use, like I said, I usually try to keep them slick as possible um, with three mag shingles. Those are the slickest ones that I use. And the, the three mag shingle one that I have here is from Perot's, uh, Perot's Designs, I think that's how it's pronounced, some Canadian thing. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> they make good stuff and, and I really like their front panel um, enough that it's probably the only one I use uh, like 99% of the time. Um, I also like the, the elastic style ones, just realize elasticity of those eventually wears out. Um, when they fade, it looks kind of cool too, but uh, mainly it's because they, they're, they're dying. So elasticity dies eventually, you have to replace those. Um, not very often, but you do have to replace them. Now let's talk about what I keep on this, this actual panel. So uh, like I said, I keep, uh, or I, I connect it with one actual clip and one G hook. Um, I'm playing around with some stuff, so that's kind of experimental, but mainly it was so that I can unclip from one side and rotate it out and see if that works better than just having two clips uh, because one of them gets bound up because they're big. And then it also keeps it a little slicker over here with a G hook for magazine stuff. So that's, that's where I was going with it. And we'll see if I keep it. We'll see if I don't. It's just something I'm playing around with because I like to evolve. Uh, right? I'm, not, I'm not a damn uh, dinosaur. Because <laughs> they died. They didn't evolve. Uh, so, <laughs> so going further, right? I'm just kidding. They evolved before that. Now, going further, uh, we'll start like... You guys could see I have two mags. Uh, I don't really put a lot on the front there, uh, but it's enough to continue working a little bit until I can get to my bag or go through my bag and, and pull mags out of there. Um, and those should be placed strategically inside the bag by themselves or in a pouch that you can pull from from the outside, something like that that you can work from. Now, the, the mags that I usually use on my plate carrier, I try to put mag pods on them if I can, right? If I can get away with it. And the reason for that is, as you can see, the way they retain with these bungees, because I like bungee retention. Um, I like the flaps too, but I like bungee more. Um, what you'll see is that if I needed to get to this mag, all I had to do is push a thumb and I could push that bungee off. 
if you're using them and they're in the center of the mag pod, it could slide off. I'm uh, sorry, it'll retain it really well, but you have to pull it up to release it to get to a mag. Not a big deal, something trainable. Uh, but what I've noticed is if I keep it on the back, it's a little bit more uh, accessible, but it also retains it really well because the mag pods have this little tiny toe that's right back here that holds on to the bungee really well. So I like it there. I like using it that way because if I have to get to it, I can. Um, the other reason I like to do it that way is, uh, or the other reason I like mag pods is because now it has two purposes. So your, your magazine used to have just one, feed the gun. Now it has a better stability platform for being in the prone, um, like a really good stability platform, like actually um, something that I can, I, can, I can see a difference between that and teeter-tottering on the back of a normal mag. So for me, that, that's a huge improvement on a magazine. And, and for 20 bucks, you get like three of them. Hell yeah. So easy, easy pickings. Um, so I think the Gen 3 ones come out hopefully one day. Uh, they've been coming out soon for a very long time. <laughs> Come on, Shane. Uh, but but other than that, uh, the Gen Two ones are out there, and they're they're prep, uh, like they're they're all over the place. So enjoy yourself. Just don't buy any knockoffs. Now, going going further on the front pouch, I have a tourniquet, a set of shears, and my knief, right? And my knife I I use as a variant one. It, I can't pronounce what it's called, um, but it's something Japanese, I think or Chinese or something in, in some foreign Asian language. <laughs> but the, uh, my buddy, my buddy at variant one, uh, made this knife with another buddy, uh, Shinobi, uh, or Trung known as Trung. Uh, but, uh, but they made this knife with this style of knife and I really like it. It's very, it's a Tonto blade and it's reverse as well. Uh, which is really nice knife. Uh, I use it for prying a little bit, uh, before getting an actual pry bar on my kit. Uh, but it is a really nice, uh, nice knife. Um, very useful for a lot of different things. I just don't cut clothing with it. That's what shears are for, um, things that I don't want to hurt people. So shears are very important. I love having scissors of some sort on my kit. It's very, very useful. And, and for me, I, I think I use those more than I use the mags, more than I use the tourniquet. Like I cut a lot of things, uh, cordage, clothing, um, anything, right? Like they, they could be really useful for a lot of stuff. But it's nice to have the option knife or scissors, uh, shears. <laughs> now you can buy different ones too that fold up and they go in a little pouchy pouch. I have those in a bag. Um, I like them more for a bag than I do on a kit, but up to you on how you use it, right? Um, and these, I don't get upset if I lose them. Tourniquet, pretty simple. Now the way I attach them and I keep them in the pouch is different from the bungee that you get from, um, from most mag mag carrier or mag pouch uh, styles. So as you can see, it's a mag pouch. So I had to kind of modify a couple things to make it usable for me. So I used to just use one of these bungees and it goes over and I tried to retain everything with it, but it was too loose. So I tightened it up and then it was too tight because I couldn't get it off the tourniquet. What you see here is a, a crazy little way of doing it, but I took one of the little hook things that come with the Team Wendy helmets and I hook it onto the Perot's little loop that they have on the, on the top of their, their mag pouch is a little molly loop. And, uh, and all I do is just hook it on there and I tie it off to the back portion. And what I have here is now something I can pull off, pull uh, anything out of here really easily. And if I had to retain it again, I just pull that little hook down and hook it back onto its little, uh, little molly strap down there, which it's not hooking to right now. Uh, it's bunched up. So right there, it, it makes it a little easier for me um, in the sense of having it retained and it's not falling out and flying out, which I definitely had a few things fly out a few times. Uh, so you just learn over time, like, hey, don't do it that way. Um, going further behind it, I use an AXL sandwich pouch for like a notebook and a Sharpie and a couple other things like a VS-17 panel and stuff like that. So what I like about these little sandwich bags, it's very simple. It sits right behind your pouch. Um, but having a notebook, having a good old um, Sharpie and stuff in there is, is really useful. You can put other things in it too, but uh, I don't go too overboard. Um, I usually have an extra VS-17 panel in there, and I think I used it, and I need to replace that. Um, but I like having, having myself a little bit of an admin pouch there. Um, nice and useful. Now, oh, also behind it... 
I usually just keep a pry bar. Now I used to keep my pry bar on the side and I started keeping it in between. I actually got that from a SWAT dude. Uh, saw his um, when we were, we were training and I liked it a lot. I liked the way that he kept it and it was, it was very simple. So went with that, just sliding it through the molly. And the Winkler one has like a wrench portion up top, like for, for nuts. So it's easy to pull out. And then once you've had it in there for a while, it just slides right back into that molly loop because it's kind of formed to it. Uh, so really nice pry bar. Um, I can't wait to break things with it. Going further, right, I have these three little like elastic loopy things. And I got these from the military. Somebody handed them to me one day uh, while I was overseas. And he was like, hey, you can use these for your chem lights. I was like, cool. And I used them for like my reds and oranges and stuff like that, which were important for certain things. And, uh, and what I ended up doing uh, over time was I stopped using those on there and I started using it for other things. And then over time, it just I, I stuffed Ear Pro in there one time, like little foamies like you see now. And I was like, oh man, that's pretty awesome. So uh, what I keep on here are just three little foamies, as you can see, like foamy Ear Pro, uh, because sometimes I just need some Ear Pro or I need some backup Ear Pro, which is kind of nice because uh, I don't have my helmet or something. And it's really nice to have something um, I used to keep the little Surefires uh, in, in one of the pouches on my kit before, and I just kept losing them. So uh, foamies, I don't get upset when I lose them, but uh, everybody knows the adage. You know, there's three of them on here because that's what the loops allowed, and it was just like extra shit. So, um, you know, we all know like one is, one is none, two is one, and then three is two plus one. So just... <laughs> So just having at least the, the good old having foamies and I've lost one before and had to pull the third one out. So it's kind of nice having three. Uh, as stupid and little simple kind of BS that is, it's kind of nice. And every once in a while they come in handy. So it's not bad. It doesn't weigh anything and it just takes up a small amount of space. Not a bad thing to have personally. So in my experience at least. Um, going further, you just see my name tape from the army. Um, ours were Ranger Green because that's the right color. And then, uh, and then just one of my logo patches, which are really good. Those are my little glint square ones that you'll get if you come to a class. Um, those are like only for alumni. And then, so don't ask if you could buy one. Um, and then up here is a glint square style uh, actual American flag um, from the guys that actually made these, which is Gear Swag. So they're, they're nice dudes over there, but they made this nice little flaggy flag. So I keep it on there too, because America. Um, Going through it, most of my play carriers, I'll use the ice vents arrows, right? The uh, uh, ice vents are really nice in my hot ass environment. Um, it's not because like I can't take the weight of the play carrier, I need pads. It's not really that. What it is is that uh, because these help you breathe, your shoulders are more comfortable all day instead of getting soggy up top. So uh, for me, it's just for breathability more than it is for any kind of like comfort. Um, and, and I like them a lot uh, to the point where their ice vents are on all the play carriers I use now. Um, and like I said, it's not because they're un it's uncomfortable or it's too heavy. It's because it's like, it gives me some, um, some ventilation. Um, on the other side, it's still undone from the play carrier video, but it's usually just like this one. And, um, and I usually route my PTT cables through there if I need to, or I'll loop them on here or loop them through here. That's why I like this play carrier a lot. I'll loop my, my cordage through the inside if you can. That's one of the best ways to do it. It protects the cord, but it also keeps it uh, the wires out of your other gear. So if you can, route your stuff, um, especially if you keep your radio in the same spot. Now, on the, on the, on the right side, uh, that's where I usually put one of these wing-style uh, pouches uh, for extra stuff. Mo mostly a radio. I try to keep a radio where I could see it. Um, I don't like keeping radios on my back. It just never was comfortable. Also, I can't get to it. So changing channels, different things, or, or fixing any kind of technical difficulties, I can't do it from back here, even the volume. So sometimes people are just too loud. So I couldn't do anything, but at the front, I can actually manipulate it, pull it out, see it, uh, all that stuff. So I prefer it up here. Um, but some people just don't like it there. But once again, personal preference stuff. Uh, going further, uh, we get to my admin pouch or kind of like my general purpose pouch. I use this over the years for so many different things. Um, and, and it's kind of uh, now as, as, a, as a normal human, I just use it for snacks. <laughs> so mainly in here, I, I just keep snacks, sunflower seeds, some nuts, and, and uh, some kind of bar of sorts. 
there's more room in here so I can put more stuff. So if I need to actually use it for like two or three or 40 mic mic stuff, or if I needed it for more mags, I can actually slide mags in here, leave this thing zipped open and have multiple mag pouches out of this because it's lined with Velcro. So I could do whatever I want with it, which is really nice. So those of you that have the Spiritus, uh, like their, their mag pouches that go inside their actual um, uh, placard, that little fight light, fight something, whatever. Uh, if you have some of those pouches that go in there, the shingles, you can actually slide them in here and use this as a secondary mag pouch area for more mags. If you had to carry more on your body readily available because you know you are gonna get into you know a whole Benghazi situation. So you can do shit like that. Um, so it's really convenient having it uh, in, in this spot because I could do anything I want. I could pull out the, the snacks and put them in a pocket and do that. I could put extra batteries in here, which every, every once in a while they end up in there, uh, but stuff like that. So this general purpose pouch is literally general purpose. You do what you want with it. The outside zipper I use for, there's my VS-17 panel that was supposed to be in the other pouch. So my VS-17 panel or my marking panel of some sort I also use it for a cutter, so either for zip ties or for any kind of cordage, stuff like that that I want to cut through. Um, I can cut through it really easy with something like that. I also have my down lead, so the down lead to my amps so that they could go to my radio. So they, they plug in over here and down here into my PTT. So I like keeping the down lead in here because that's when I'm going to use it. I normally don't use it without it. Uh, but I keep my down lead in here so it's not dingle dangling off my, my actual um, amps. So that's the way I do it. Um, Dropping or forgetting things. That's the way I set up my plate carrier, guys. As you can see, it's, it's very, um, very uh, slim lined, but I can add things to it whenever I want. So whether I change the placard and I put on a more beefy placard that has more stuff, that's a way of going about it. The other thing I'll do every once in a while um, to carry med, I usually use like a dangler of some sort. So this one's from RDR. This is kind of my favorite one because it's a little bit more stiff. It's not as, as like flimsy, um, but I really like the smaller versions of some of these that are coming out. This one's from Pharaoh Concepts because now sliding this bad boy in here, I can have a pretty slim setup and it's not hitting my legs when I sit down for too much. And now I can carry med on me um, and, and give myself a lot more room to play with or just another admin pouch or put it put demo or do whatever I want with it, which is kind of nice. So I, I like little danglers. I just don't use them as much because they just take up more room that I don't need, but it's always available to throw on. Um, it's not bad to have a couple different kinds. So medical one and maybe one for like their defense mechanism one I use for smokes. So I'll put smokes in here and then I can, I can keep this thing inside of a bag and I can pull it out of the bag and slap it underneath and work with this one as a dangler too. So different options. I like options, man. And, and it's real useful to, to kind of mess around with the things you use. Um, but it just comes down once again to what you're going to do, what you're using it for and how you're going to set it up. Now, I know some people are going to ask me, I totally forgot to mention it, but the two tan uh, one wraps that go down, I was messing around with an, op, uh, an, an uh, idea I had for um, for sticking like Velcroed small items like so onto the front of these pouches so that I can do certain things. Like if it was just a quick, like just need to throw them there for whatever reason. Um, what I ended up doing, and uh, I think I can show you here. What I ended up doing with this, if I can get these gloves off here, there we go. So what I'll end up doing a lot of times when I'm wearing these, is you take your gloves on and off, I stick my gloves to it. So I can stick my gloves on there with the Velcro and now they dangle underneath my mags. Now, back in the day, I used to stick my, my, my gloves up here. And what I found is when they were up there, I couldn't get to my stuff. I'd have to like move them, things like that. So uh, putting them a little lower, uh, really useful, depending on the gloves you're using. If they have like a Velcro uh, strap of some sort, you could do that. Um, the other thing that I, I've used them for 
um, glove wise is to shove gloves underneath them. So in through the actual loops underneath, you can slide a little bit of your glove and, uh, and retain it just so that you don't have to have it in your way or anything like that. So just different stuff. I've put my like snivel gear in there and stuff. So I have it, uh, readily available, but it's actually a pretty useful, useful spot to put stuff. Um, I just don't use it as often cause I just don't need to, but it's, it's there if I need to, and I was messing around with it. So why not? But yeah, that's my plate carrier guys. Uh, nothing to it, nothing crazy to it at least. Um, but it is the way that I set it up and both of mine are set up relatively the same. Um, the other one is a defense mechanism plate carrier and we can go through that one one day. Uh, because I, I use that one a little differently because I don't use it for water stuff. This one I use for more water stuff. All right. So take care. Hope this was helpful. And, uh, and let me know if you have any questions below.